<coughs> we're in um, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 today. Ecclesiastes follows Proverbs, one of Solomon's books. Ecclesiastes is a very interesting book, written completely different than most of the um, most of the other writings, most of the other books. The Song of Solomon is an unusual book. Ecclesiastes is a different book. I studied uh, Proverbs for most of my life and thought as I read each one, well that's smart. And then it, in the last few years I, it dawned on me how much deeper Proverbs than all the writings of Solomon is. Solomon is said by God to be the wisest man that ever lived. If he was, he's certainly much smarter than me. If we had a rocket scientist from NASA come in and explain jet propulsion to us, we would all end up with our jaws on the floor in this room. Because we're not of that high IQ, we haven't had that kind of uh, training in physics, science and chemistry, and all of us would just be standing here not knowing what he's talking about. Agreed? Well, how much wiser is Solomon than the rest of us? And how much depth is there that we skim over a verse and we say, okay, I understand it. But you really don't. You really don't. I probably said this before, but for the sake of example, I, I spent four years in vocational school during my high school years studying electronics and then I decided to go for an electronics degree and I decided that I would probably be ahead of the class because I had all this pre-training and for the first two weeks I knew everything they talked about they explained resistor color code they explained DC theory and then it got way over my head sometimes you think you know everything and then when you start really looking at it the big picture you don't know anything so I want you to keep all that on, on your mind this morning as we look at this passage in Ecclesiastes 11. The, the message today is called Throwing Bread. Throwing Bread. You like that? Throwing Bread. That's right. Um, Ecclesiastes 11. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. So many times in the Word of God we find things that are cultural things that we don't understand. This is not one of them. We find things that they did... Uh, for instance, they they throw ashes on their head and they wear sackcloth when they're in mourning. Um, some a lot of a lot of other cultural things. Um, when people vowed in Abraham's day to make a promise, they would kneel down before the person, and the person would be sitting, and they would put their hand under their thigh, uh, hand, hand under their thigh, and bow down, and they would promise to them. And that was significant. That that was a binding legal contract. We, we have signatures today. You put your signature on something, you hold, it holds you to it. So all those kind of things were cultural that we don't have in our day. You know, we don't, we, we read them and we don't understand them. This passage is a mysterious passage that really requires thought. And I remember the first time I ever heard this preached on, and, I, and after I got through, I still didn't know what it was talking about. And I didn't believe the person giving the message knew what they was talking about. And it didn't make any sense to me. But this is one of those that if you get to the end of this message and you say, I still don't understand it, go back and study it again. Think about it some more. Okay? Depth, people. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Now there is here a foolishness in the image you get when you read through this line. It seems like, like Paul said, we're not supposed to throw bread. You know? So what's the only time you think about throwing bread out on the water? Feeding the fish, feeding the ducks, right? 
That's right. That's what we think about. And so you might think about that, but that's what this is talking about. Throwing it out for the for the fish or for the ducks. And maybe that in some sense that is it for you. But this is throwing something out and doing something that seems and to some people wasteful even. Careless. Spin thrift. You know, just just you throw things out and extravagant in your in your waste. You throw it out, but it will come back to you. And it is talking about your giving or your charity or your investments of things that you don't see the immediate results from. That's what this is talking about. There's two tr two uh, schools of thought on this, and one is that this means send your seed or send your bread out in maritime shipping. Some uh, translations of the Bible <coughs> say send your send your goods out over the waters in ships. I don't really understand that. I don't think that's what this passage means. But it could be a, a uh, derivative of this, but it's looking at just literally throwing out your, <coughs> your bread, your substance, your food. We know bread is just not just a loaf of bread, but it's food. If you break bread, it means food. And so here is throwing your bread out on the waters, for thou shalt find them after many days. The many days part is what's hard. We don't understand it. We do something. We do an act of charity. We do an act of investment. We do an act of good. We sow good seed. We do something that seems worthwhile, and we turn around, and nothing comes from it. We stop and say a kind word to someone, and they snap our head off later on. We we invest in a, a charity that turns out to be a flop. It turns out people wasted the money. We put money even in uh, investments such as stock or whatever, and we don't see anything come back from it. We give to people that we've never met before on the street, and we don't get anything back from it, and we wonder, was that a waste? After all, Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before swine. Maybe they're just swine, and I'm just throwing my pearls out. Certainly there is some wisdom in not being wasteful. The Bible teaches that, doesn't it? To be, to be wise. But also, this is something that you don't see an immediate, immediate results in. Verse 3, if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Now this sounds like the rantings of a drunk man. Look at it, really, and think about it. You know, if a tree falls to the north or falls to the south, that's where it's going to lay. You know? And you just shake your head and think, wow, that person doesn't know anything. And yet, this man wrote this out of wisdom. So think about what he said. The clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves. You know, if a cloud is full of rain, it doesn't empty itself just because you snap your fingers, does it? A cloud can come over, it looked cloudy. We had a couple of weeks ago, it was overcast for almost a week. Every day it looked like rain, it did not rain a drop. Sometimes things look so promising, and you know what? The cloud will empty itself eventually, right? It will rain. That is moisture that you see. And that moisture will come down, right? If a tree falls to the north or the south, wherever it falls, that's where it's going to be. Things happen in nature. Things occur that you have no control over. And when it does, that's where it's going to be. You cannot foresee the things that are going to happen in your life. You do not know what is going to take place in your life. This, this was an eye-opener for me when I was young. That when you're going through school, you get a general education. You know, in high school, you learn about a little bit about chemistry, and a little bit about history, and a little bit about science and physics and math, a little bit about everything. 
and then you go to college, you specialize, do you not? You specialize in a field. And when you specialize in that field, you're picking courses that specialize you in a certain area of life, certain academic area that really pique you in that field. You know, it could be accounting, you're studying math, you're studying finances, economics, um, teaching. Obviously, you're going to get a, a fairly broad education in some area, but, you know, it occurred to me that when you study the Word of God, there is something every time for you. It is not like that general education that you had in high school, right? So when you look at this passage, it talks about where the tree falls, there it shall be. I have given so many times messages to people that they just shrugged their shoulders and shook their head and, and said, you know, I don't get it. It's not for me. When I knew in my heart that they were about to be faced with a trial or a battle or something, and I was so frustrated knowing that I didn't know what their battle was going to be, but I, but I would just almost take their little face in my hand and say, this is for you. You're about to go through a storm. Listen to me. And they just said, life's good. Bills are paid. I'm in health. But I'm trying to tell them they're about to go through a battle. If a tree falls, you don't have no control over it. You don't control where it's going to fall. You don't control when it's going to fall, how it's going to fall. And once it falls, that's where it is. Amen? Those battles will come in your life. Those days will come when the tree will fall. The tree will fall. I was going through some um, archives of maps last night. Historical aerial photos it was very interesting to see that 50 years ago, 75 years ago, you can look at an aerial photo where roads were even cut through at that time, where trees, huge trees were, and you could zoom in on them. There were houses at that time that no longer exist, and things changed so much in time. And when you look at it then, you look at it now, I, I looked at a house I lived in 30 years ago. The house was fairly new when I lived there. The, the trees were this big around. And one of them I looked at last night, a modern day picture of the house. The tree had grown so big, it had covered the house. You could barely see the roof. It was a huge oak tree. And that is not much time that, for a tree to grow like that. The things will happen in your life and God is trying to prepare us for them and he wants you to pay attention. Amen? Verse 4, He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that re regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. <clears throat> so many times we put off doing what we know needs to be done. We know that we need to invest in something. Invest in people. Give in charity. We need to deal with a problem with a child or with a, with a spouse. We need to deal with a problem in a relationship. We need to deal with something and we don't do it. We let a tooth go. And I, I'm guilty of this. Last year, let a tooth go to the point instead of getting it filled, the doctor just has to pull it. You put things off that you know need to be done because, oh well, I don't need brushing my teeth because, you know, I might get cancer and die first before I lose my teeth. Really? I mean, do we not take care of things or should we not take care of things? I mean, things that are t tiny little problems now will grow into big problems. If you have a little small uh, pencil eraser size dot of rust on your fender, that looks like nothing to you that will grow that one day you'll walk by there there'll be a hole in the side of your finger you know that little drip that you see coming through the roof one day the whole ceiling will fall in amen that that little drip it will grow and grow and grow and as he said if you're going to observe the wind you're not going to sow 
if you're looking for that time to jump in, it's like a freight train going by and you're trying to grab a car and you're looking for the car that's going the slowest. You know? They're all going the same speed and you're looking for that. Well, I'm looking for that. I'm waiting for my chance here. You need to just get on the train and go. Well, you need to quit putting off things that need to be done. Amen? Verse 6, In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thy hand, for thou knowest not whether thou shalt prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. <coughs> if you wait for a good charity that checks out 100%, that if you go through it with a fine-tooth comb, if you go through looking for a good cause to give to, you will never find it. Did you hear me? If you're looking for somebody that is 100% honest that every penny goes, every penny goes for what you think it ought to go for, you will never find it. If you're looking for a good candidate for political office, you won't find them. What we end up in our country having to do is the lesser of the two evils most of the time, which is sad. But there are so many different things you could find wrong or get something. And he said, In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thy hand. How many times have we passed by the person ringing the bell in the red bucket and we don't give them any money? Well, I just don't know about the Salvation Army. I just don't know about that charity. Well, I'm waiting on the good one. I'm waiting on the good one. I have a, I have a real bad, serious problem with my own personality in delaying to give. So this is for me also this morning. I have a real issue with looking for that perfect person to give to. Angie has this great heart and this great uh, discernment that, and she does something that she's been doing for years. She goes and she gets a couple of gift cards for a fair amount of money and she'll and her thing to do is when she's shopping she gives one to somebody and he gives one to somebody else she gives to two families and she gave one to me one year and she said this year you're going to give this this out and she and i walked through there thinking okay who do i give to so i'm i'm in this panic mode of who do i give to so i look and i look down and there's these you know people there doesn't look like i can't read that they have any kind of need in their life I can't grab it. I'm trying to, and I get through the whole store and I, I give it back to her. I didn't find anybody. You're only laughing because it's true. My dilemma was I was waiting for the perfect day to plant my seed. The soil's too wet. The soil's too dry. This spot is too rocky. I'll never grow anything. I should have, I should have, Given in faith. Now I was praying the whole time, and I did not discern one person. She could take that card and she could walk through, and she could discern somebody. and And the moment she gives it to them, they start crying, and then they start explaining. My husband just got laid off, and we didn't know where our Christmas was going to come from, and this will cover all of it. Stop waiting to give. Stop waiting to find the right time to invest. I know of people who have reached retirement age who never put back a penny for retirement and now they panic. What am I going to do? Well, I don't know. I do not know. How am I going to be able to retire? I'm just going to have to die and let the insurance pay and help my wife. That's all I can do. I'm just going to have to work till I die. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Young people invest. Young people give. Amen? <clears throat> oh, man. Amen. We're going to go to, uh, we've got a couple of passages to look at. Um, Acts chapter 20, verse 35. <clears throat> it 
This is Paul speaking. And he says, I have showed you all things how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. We all have heard that phrase, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Here we're, we find that it is the words of Christ. Now the thing is, you won't find this anywhere else in the Bible. You won't find it in the Gospels. This passage is said by some people that this is not really Jesus' words, that Paul is misquoting him. I think they're in error. I think that is a direct quote from Jesus that was just never recorded in the Gospels. In the end of John, John writes and says, if all the things Jesus said and did were recorded in books, there would not be enough books in the world to hold it. So there was a lot of things Jesus said that are not recorded in those four Gospels. Here, we find out, we learn a little secret, that Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. So we think about what that means. That, is it more fun, more happiness, more joy to get something? Now we all know what it's like to get something. But few of us know what it's really like to give something. You know? Because you know what our giving is like that we're not really blessed in? It's getting rid of stuff. I had too many of these, Andy. Would you like one? I've got this old worn out sweater, Sarah. Would you like to wear it? You know? We don't know what it's like to really give, do we? I mean, think about it. If we did really give, 